The first AI tool that I think you should know about that's brand spanking new, spank, is A4i, or A4AI, whatever it is. So here we've got annotate your files using different styles. It's got all of this stuff, but let's just jump straight into it. This is like a reference manager on steroids, and you can also put it into Word and those sort of places. You can see here that there is a Word extension, which means you can use all of the power of this tool in your uh, Word document. But Let's not get ahead of ourselves there, matey. Let's talk about what it does. So on this first page is where you upload all of your references. So you can import items, you can upload file, URL, and that's what I did. I uploaded files, I clicked here, and then I uploaded some of my uh, peer-reviewed papers that I've published in the past. But also you can obviously just put the ones that you're collecting for a particular research project. Um, and here we've got add library. We can create a shareable library, uh, shared library invites, if you're invited so there we are that's what you have here it's a very sort of basic kind of reference manager and um, on the surface there's nothing special but here is where it starts to get special I think and that is this research assistant you click here bonk and you end up on this chatbot. Now, the one thing about this that I absolutely love, and it's something that we're seeing more and more, but I think they've done very well and the AI works fantastically, is by chatting to multiple documents. So here, if you look down here, we've got the AI that we use. Um, you click the one that you want. Let's just say that one. Some of them you can only get to with uh, professional and unlimited plans. I'm using the cheapskate one at the moment. But here I've got the GPT-4 Mini. And also this bit is the most important. Look down here, document retrieval. We click here, click settings. Now, when you first go here, this isn't by default clicked. So you want to make sure that you've got the right library or the right shared library or the right documents selected. And then we've got seven files selected, which is great. And once you've done that, you can chat to the files. And the one thing I think I found that is really useful is it's able to extract data. So here was one of the um, prompts that I gave it. What are the highest efficiencies of OP device in my reference list? And I said, go away and look at it by uh, selecting the documents I wanted it to look at down here. And then it says, based on the information extracted, these are the things I found. And here is a table with all of the stuff. Mwah, 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 mwah. That's exactly what you want. Now, I'm not sure how many files you can really upload before it starts to get a bit weird, but based on what I've done here, I am very, very impressed with the fact it's able to go through multiple researches, through multiple references, and find what I need to find out, which is really good. And we've also got custom instructions down here if we want to do something like, uh, you know, choose the personality language or instructions for a chat. If it's not quite getting you what you want, but I think in this this experiment, it has done very, very well. You've also got options down here. You can use a prompt or you can select a paper. So if I want to select a prompt, look, you can see down here, summarize, and you can create a new prompt, which you can save there. And if it's a prompt you're using regularly, perfect. So that is A4 AI, and I think it's really, really awesome. Um, and something that you should probably look at because the free version gets you 500 megabytes of storage and some of the less powerful, but still interesting uh, features of this tool. Go check it out. We love a good literature review automation on this channel, and this is Seamless. Seamless is a way to draft your literature review 100 times faster with AI. We'll see about that seamless, but ultimately it is a way of getting uh, papers and a very simple literature review, but I think this could be something to watch for the future if they expand the literature review components a little bit. You'll see what I mean now. So this is the app. It's very, very simple. You have to get credits. Um, I paid for here $9.99, just 10 GPT-4 credits, and that just gets you uh, four of these uh, generations, but you get you know a low quality one, which I wouldn't use. I don't think it's worth um, sort of like using that one. Pay for something if you want to test it. Um, and this is what we end up with. And so basically, if you're looking for a literature review for a paper, this can give you a great starting point because you may have your data, you may have your conclusions, but you need to write an introduction or a literature review for your paper. And this is where you can start. So here it says, draft a literature review from a description of your paper. So you can go in and write what you want the literature review to be about. I went through and I asked it about OPV devices. Um, it hasn't got the 
uh, the thing that I had there before, whoopsie doodle, but essentially it was about OPV devices and it was about uh, nanoparticle uh, active layers and this is what it was able to do. So it goes away and it finds relevant topics based on that prompt and that's what it decided to find. Oh, I also included P3HT and PCBM mixes and then it found all of these papers. So that's 15 papers that you can export to your bib text, um, but ultimately this is a load of really awesome sort of papers that you could work your way through. I think it's always great to have another sort of place where you can just go find these papers and, uh, you know, work your way through them and work out if they're any good. But you simply click on them like this and they pop up in Semantic Scholar, which is great. So that is a way to get loads of papers. But this is what we're really interested in down here. And it's this literature review at the bottom. So this is what we're interested in. And this could be the beginning of a structure of an introduction or a literature review for any paper, which I really like. It is 100 times faster, but you can't just grab this and plonk it in your literature review for your paper because that is plagiarism and stealing. So you do have to kind of work your way through it, but I think it's a great basis for your paper. So here you can see the field of organic photovoltaics has been rapidly evolving. So it starts very broad, which is very nice. And then it down here, it gets, you know, the specific integration of nanoparticles, especially those made from aluminium offers a doping, blah, blah, blah. So overall, you can see that it's sort of like tried to reference things for some reason as well. Like it's got this reference 66, where that's actually the name of the chemical, which is really interesting. Don't use, you know, that is not right because that goes to the uh, reference. It's not, it's the name of the chemical. Um, and then it tries its best to kind of like reference. It hasn't sort of like put all 15 in there, which is a little bit disappointing. You know, it's got one, four, six, and seven. So only, that's only like four references. But I think this is something, like I said, that is valuable for this, the papers found, and also the first structure of your literature review. The more information you can put there, the better. Let's have a look at an example. This paper explores the application, blah, blah, blah. So you can see that that is the sort of thing that it needs. And if we click generate, it will start sort of like working in the background on the relevant topics the papers found and uh, it will create a little literature review as well. Let's come back to that in a minute, but let's go on to the next one. Paper guide. Paper guide is uh, something that I think you should be looking at, um, especially if you want to chat with PDFs and uh, extract information from particular studies you've found. So it says, hey Andy, hey, paper guide. Um, here we got references. You can upload your references. I found it quite slow, but nonetheless, there are a couple up there that I put there. You've got chats, so you can chat with your PDF or you can do an AI search. And so you can search for um, any question. You can also get it to search in open access papers or my references once you've uploaded them. And you've got this writer. This writer, I don't particularly like at the moment. I don't think it's as good as Jenny AI or as the research and uh, size space update, but nonetheless, it is there and it could be useful for you. You only get uh, 10 AI generations a day with your free AI limit. So overall, um, I think this is best used at the moment for chatting with individual PDF documents and any AI search for open access papers. Nonetheless, paperguide.ai I think is something to keep your eye on in the future. And you can see this is my recently added paper. You get an AI summary, you get the key concepts, notes, you get the document and info all in one. So this is, I think, a great place if you just want to sort of, you know, our key concepts, let's generate that. Um, that's the sort of uh, way I think I would use paper guide at the moment. Back to Seamless a little bit. Here is the literature review. You can see it's done much better to put it in many more references. And here is the reference list. So this is the sort of sort of um, description of your paper you need to put in. I'd put in a, you know, the biggest paragraph you can. And I think it does a much better job than just putting like a sentence. So there we are. There's Seamless for Science. The last thing I think you need to know about isn't technically AI, I don't think, but nonetheless, it is BioRender. BioRender has got this new graphing function. If we click there in the BioRender user interface and we look for graphs, this is the sort of stuff I think that really makes a presentation, a paper standout if your graphs look perfect. So loading BioRender graph, 
Come on, load, mate. There we go. Okay, you got to say come on to it and then it works. Um, okay, so here we've got data set. So when you've got a particular data set, you can upload it to this uh, interface. And here is their sample data set. So we've got different controls, treatment, treatment, treatment. And then underneath that, you can add a graph. This is the graph they've got here. And you can see it just looks great immediately. You can remove the remote watermark by actually paying money, but nonetheless, this is the sort of stuff that you can expect to be able to do. You can zoom in and out. You can um, also change the graph type. So box plot, you've got violins, all sorts of stuff. Median, uh, and mean and median point. I don't know, I've never used those before. Um, this is not my field, um, but columns. Oh, I love a good column. And then you've got color. You've got multicolor, you've got fonts, you've got all of the stuff that you need to know down here and then the one thing I like about it is analysis. You can add an analysis, you can create unlimited analysis with premium but I created one here and uh, it's a really great way of extracting the information from your data set um, using I think I guess it's AI or some sort of um, sort of uh, software behind the scenes that allows you to do that but nonetheless this is an update to BioRender. We all know BioRender for creating nice infographics and schematics but this is now that next level where you can put your own data in, get beautiful graphs to go in your presentation, your papers, or just for fun, because you like to create beautiful things. So those are the tools I think you should know about. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about using AI tools for literature reviews. You're gonna love it.